Ho, 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 Hello, party people, and welcome to a very special holiday-themed episode of the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I am your holiday host, as always, Jeff Stormer. This week, I am joined once again by good friend of the show, Brandon Leon Gambetta, for a special holiday-themed GM-less game of masks set in these Protean City comics. Protean City is, of course, Brandon's exceptional Masks actual play podcast on the Stop, Hack, and Roll network about a group of teen superheroes fighting evil and learning about themselves. You can find more information at ProteanCity.com. And Brandon, in addition to being the GM of Protean City Comics, is also one of the hosts of Stop, Hack, and Roll and the designer of Pasión de las Pasiones, the Powered by the Apocalypse game of Latinx telenovela, all of which are spectacular, all of which you can find information about in the show notes. Brandon is a treasured friend of the show, and I'm so excited to have him back for what is becoming one of my favorite holiday traditions. So all that said, let's get right into the show. Let's get this holiday spectacular underway. Let's throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I am overjoyed, beyond overjoyed, to be joined once again by my good friend, Brandon Leon Gambetta. Brandon? Brandon? Thank you so much for coming back on Party of One. Jeff, thank you so much. I love coming on Party of One, and this being one of our Christmas traditions just fills me with joy every December. It is a treasured, a treasured seasonal tradition for me, and I could not be happier because we've done a little prep for this episode so far, and I feel like we've got a real good one on our hands. (laughs) I'm extremely excited. (laughs) But before we get into that, Why don't you take a moment and let the lovely listeners at home know about all of the wonderful projects that you are working on that you might want them to know about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I am one of the GMs and players at Protean City Comics, which is a Masks actual play podcast that attempts to really capture the feeling of following a comic book line. So we do like a lot of meta narrative stuff that we think is a lot of fun. We have rotating cast, uh, wonderful, diverse world. We we love doing that. It's been such a joy lately. And Jeff is uh, a character within that as well. He's come on as a guest, and I want to get him on as a guest another time soon because Dr. Demoniaco Jr. is an incredible character. It's a great character. <laughs> I'm, it's a very good character. I'm very proud. I, I Periodically, I'll just get a tweet of somebody listening to that episode for the first time, and it just fills my heart with joy because I love that character so much. I feel like everyone who listens to that episode tweets about it because that's like one mm-hmm. of the episodes that we get the most tweets about. We need to get Dr. Demoniaco Jr. back. Yeah, people, people, go, people get really hyped for that episode, and it fills my heart with joy. It's so good. Uh, I also am one of the hosts of Stop, Hack, and Roll, which is a podcast about game design, where we try to design a whole bunch of different games, and we try to like make it a process-driven podcast that actually builds some stuff. Uh, Jeff has also been on part of, and Stop, Hack, and Roll a couple of times. This is true. Treasured guest, Jeff Stormer. A fre- frequent collaborator is the phrase that I would use. And dear friend... And dear friend. Uh, I also, through that, am the author of Pasión de las Pasiones, which is a telenovela game powered by the apocalypse, which is being published by Magpie Games. Uh, Keep an eye out for that in 2019. It's not going to be in any stockings this year, but, you know, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. Keep an it'll eye be out. out. It'll be out sooner than later, and I cannot wait for when it drops. Uh, it is one of my most anticipated games of all of the anticipated games. Thank you so much. I'm I'm really happy with how that's going. I'm beyond excited for it, Brandon. I can't. I don't know if you can tell. But I'm beyond <laughs> excited for it. Uh, and I also do some Twitch streaming uh, at uh, Doctor Captain Cobalt, <laughs> which is uh, becoming a larger and larger percentage of my life. I'm doing it so much now. <laughs> I, I I started doing Twitch streaming because you've been doing yeah. Twitch streaming and it's it's a great it's a great experience. <laughs> it's been so much fun just connecting with folks. So this week we are playing not just not just a game a game of masks. It'd be easy to say we are playing a game of Simple. masks, but we are doing so much more than that. We are playing a two player GM less game of masks. Yes, but it would be easy to say that we were just playing a two player <laughs> GM less game of masks. We Brandon. We are playing a two-player GMless Masks Christmas special. <laughs> yes, uh, indeed we are. That is a podcast crossover, because I think we said we were going to set it in Protean City. Yes. So this yes, is... it is a Protean City party of one Christmas Masks <laughs> GMless two-player special. Yeah, so... Uh, we're doing a lot of things tonight. It's amazing. Amazing. Um, so... 
with that said, why don't we introduce our characters? Why don't why don't I go first? Okay. Since I think your character will introduce the crux of the narrative. I think so. I, I, I feel like I'm very much the foil character in this, which I think is a good place to be. So I am playing Tyler St. Magdalene. Tyler, young man, teenage delinquent, up to no good, troublemaker. Goes by teenaged wasteland. You can just call him wasteland. Tyler is a born again prankster. Just a prankster through and through. Has never has has not a law abiding bone in his body. Loves messing with people. Loves getting in people's heads. And you know, I don't know. One day my powers just woke up. I don't really, you know. I realized that I could like really get in people's heads. And like if I wanted them to be mad or scared. I just kind of thought it, and suddenly people started getting, like, mad and scared, which is pretty cool for pranks, because I can just be like, hey, scared, and then they, like, run away, and then, like, you know, I can break into their car and steal their stereo or something. You know, it's good stuff. Oh, my God, for he's such pretty a great. <laughs> he's a little, he's I love just, him. Tr- he's trees my trash son, and I love him. <laughs> and uh, he's been, you know, hanging around, um... He periodically gets checked in on by his school principal, Principal McLean. She just wants to make sure he's doing okay because he used to probably be a nice kid and then he's now he's kind of a jerk. And I think that we've on a normal on a normal Wednesday we would find him uh we would find him like, you know, hanging around the skate park, you know, breaking into breaking into a car or two, you know, keying up you know, skateboarding, keying cars, just doing, just, just causing trouble and mischief. However, today we are, he is running through the city, scrambling, half falling over. Not really sure why I'm running. I just, you know, this whole mission that we're on doesn't make any sense. But part of me, if, if she's not right, Then what then, and if she's wrong, then that's fine. And then, you know, I cause some mischief and blow some things up. Because we've already, I think, when our team first came together, we have already blown some things up, right? (laughs) I think. Definitely. I I think that we've already smashed some windows and I've been laughing a lot about it. And (laughs) I'm like, if she's wrong, then that's fine. This is a chance to make a little mischief on Christmas Eve. If she's right... And Christmas is doomed? Well, I can't. I mean, where am I going to get my presents? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Brandon, please introduce your character so that all of that will make sense. Oh, incredible. Um, so I am playing Toymaker. Uh, she is from a dystopian future where Christmas has been destroyed and forgotten. The landscape of her home which which we get in a couple of quick panels is dark and desolate it has a lot of signs that are very clear uh oh no what's the name of that movie what's the name of the movie with pottersville oh uh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful life. life jesus okay let me take that again um we get a couple of panels that show her running next to uh wasteland And it's cut over with several shots from her home world, her homeland, her home time, which is very much, it's a wonderful life Pottersville combined with like dystopian future. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's kind of like... Like if if the Terminators had had invaded Pottersville. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Uh, And just definitely no Christmas around. Um, and, like, it shows a couple of huddled, uh, rebel types and, like, has the brief scene. Do you want me to hit this scene now or not yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hit it now. Because I think, like, I think that as we're running, I'm thinking, like, if she's wrong, then, then Christmas is doomed. And I think that's kind of when we flash back to your perspective and we see exactly what it means, what we mean by, like, Christmas is doomed. There's a group of five elves holding hands uh, in, like, full uh, Christmas regalia, but all in blacks and grays. And this just, 
like magical force space in the middle, but it's wavering. It's it's barely clinging on, and we see uh, Toy Maker just dive through, and there's a, a large man with a big white beard, uh, big definitely, but jolly and plump, isn't hitting mm-hmm. it anymore. Uh, there's a doctor standing next to him, and he just goes. Come back to us and save and it, I, Nieves. And I think as that is happening, you know, you, you Santa whispers that, and then suddenly tearing through, like bursting through a window of a hot, like of a of a tenement apartment, is a uh, massive, mangy hissing and growling. The Yule Cat bursts <laughs> through and just screams. You're not wearing new clothes! And then they're like, no, the Yule Cat! And then they have to, then they start running as the portal closes, <laughs> and that's where we flash back to the present. Yes. Uh, and so we get this full body shot that shows Nevis running next to, or the toy maker, running next to Wasteland. Um, and she is, she's on the shorter side. Uh, she's definitely Latinx uh, and has an undercut that is, like, really severe, but as she, like, it's, like, it's pulled up really high on her head because mm-hmm. she has, like, some scarring up high that, like, she wants to to make sure is is visible, right? Like, she doesn't mm-hmm. want that to be covered. Uh, and the hair underneath the undercut, like, just, like, in the back is, is red and green. And she's in this, like, really sleek uh, black, like, cyber suit, basically. Uh, that has green and red lights that are, like, flashing with, like, big uh, exertions of her effort, right? Like, when she, like, pumps extra hard, they start to light up a little bit. Uh, Uh, And then Wasteland is wearing a a vintage Quadrophenia the Who jacket, you know, (laughs) Um, is wearing, with with the sleeves cut off, so denim, denim jacket, sleeves cut off, um... Sort of a makeshift, I think, I think it's not quite a ski mask, it's sort of a, a, a full face mask. Um, I'm, thi- I'm thinking like black pants with probably some chains on them, big sneakers, very like, very kind of in the vein of like a, of like, not of like a Scarlet Spider or a Miles Morales when he does not have the full Spider-Man suit nice. on. So it's got like the hoodie effect and he's wearing sneakers and he's just running alongside, like, this can't be, this can't be real. Santa Claus isn't even real. What am I doing here? Was So you've come back from the dystopic future. Let me ask you this. What happened when our team first came together? <laughs> um, we averted a disaster from the future's history books. What was the disaster? What effect do we hope it had on the timeline? Hmm. Uh, I think that the big post Thanksgiving parade Mm -hmm. was when I first came in and there was, uh, the the steam society was basically just, uh, planning on taking out a different unrelated target, Mm -hmm. but they were going to go through the parade and like, it was going to be, it was going to be a horrible mess. Like lots and lots of people injured and killed and it kind of marked the beginning of people starting to forget and stop caring about Christmas Mm -hmm. because they were like, look at this huge display we did, all of this work we did, and, like, it put us in danger. It wasn't worth it. And that's when we started to lose their hearts. Hmm. It was not the the big big incident. The thing that you've been sent back to 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 stop is tonight. Is tonight, yeah. Tell me about tell me about what we're here to stop. So there is going to be an attack tonight where Dr. Deep Freeze tries to take Santa's sleigh. And in my timeline, in the future, he was successful. And in taking the sleigh, things things fell apart. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, my being sent back was done through Christmas magic. 
And yep. we anticipated this huge well of enthusiasm about Christmas and understanding of Christmas and love of Christmas. Uh, that I would be able to basically arrive and get like a surge of energy and have all my memories and have everything make sense. But that didn't happen. Uh, even mm -hmm. now, even before the sleigh is taken, people just don't believe the same anymore. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's like all these spotty holes in my memory. So I know we need to, we need to stop. We need to stop him, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what comes next. I don't know how it all fell apart. So, we're running, and I think I think what has happened on from my end is like a riot breaks out at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I'm there because you know a riot at the Thanksgiving Day Parade means that I can cause some mischief at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. I'm throwing rocks at windows. You know, I am I am I'm sneaking into stores and changing all the TV to punk mo punk rock stations. Nice. And but like super villains break out. You crash in in, like, a snowstorm, <laughs> and the two of us end up, act like, fighting this off. I think uh, some cars some cars get, like, smashed up, and, and uh, I think one of them gets dramatically exploded. <laughs> Probably by the villains. Yep, sure. <laughs> it was pretty cool, though. It was pretty cool, though, when I, I mean, when the villains blew up those cars. That was pretty neat. We get a panel that just shows you throwing one of my peppermint bombs underneath yep. the car, and it just, like, exploding in a, like, a halo of red and white. And the explosion is just me throwing horns, like, yeah! <laughs> um, and, you know, we fought our way through that. You basically grab me and are like... We need to save Christmas. Like, and you explain it, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Christmas isn't real. And then you kind of lay out a number of things that are supposed to happen. I think those things come true. Yeah. And that's when we, when, when, I think there's a spot in your memory, and then it clicks into place. Moments before our issue, you know, the, 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 the issue starts with us running, and then it clicks into place with a diet, with a narration caption that just says, like, that says 11, it, I think it was question mark, question mark, question mark on, like, the two previous panels. And then it says 1137, Santa Slay goes down. And it is now, like, 1130. <laughs> so we are just scrambling. Perfect. So, so we are, we are running to, where are we running to? We're, we're running to where the New Year's ball is about to be raised, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that's going to focus the laser. The laser? Or is it yes, something... Yes, yes, I think what has happened is I think Dr. Deep Freeze has rewired, has has secretly rewired the New Year's ball, which is on top of the spire on top of City Hall. Yeah. That, like, when it goes up, it will have, like, a firing point and will be able to knock Santa's sleigh out of the sky. And so we get just the panels that show... The two of us, like, running rooftop to rooftop to rooftop, trying to get there in time. Yep. So, we are, we are scrambling, we are running. And, uh, I think, what, what do we think, what is the first, what is, what is the challenge that, that stands in our way of getting there on time? What do we have, what's the first thing we have to overcome? Hmm. Now that we know where we're headed, we know what we're up against. What's the first? What's what's the one thing that we can that's going to stand in our way to get there on time? Part of me wants to make it a hero. Mm. That like that like there's some that there's some heroes that are kind of like in the area to make sure things go all right. That there's no they they don't know about the insidious attack. Mm -hmm. They're just there to prevent like the bigger. The, it, someone from showing could, up, right? We could make it really hurt. I mean, I'm definitely, I've definitely got some some not great law attention. Yeah, yes, that's so good. So, like, if they see me around the New Year's ball, like, there are definitely heroes that would be like, T Wasteland, what? No, 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 what are you up to? No. What are you planning? Done. No. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. All right. Uh, do we want to take a Protean City hero of some kind or do you want to uh to grab somebody new uh either one's fine by me what are you thinking um we could throw we could we could make it fully protean city and throw in a protean city character sure why don't we make it why don't we make it centurion okay. centurion is like totally this image of 
uh, of like right and justice, and mm -hmm. uh, they've been around for ages. They're um, a person in kind of like an Iron Man style suit. Okay, uh, sure. But they've got a big shield and they've got like a centurion helmet and stuff like that. Uh, no one has ever seen who they are. Um, and they mm -hmm. use they, them pronouns. Okay. But like, you know, big power armor, uh, mm -hmm. big, powerful, powerful voice. And like, just, uh, one of the big, w one of the big leaguers, right? Like someone you don't mm -hmm. mess with. So I think we're running and I think we just get a panel where we're running and then, and then, like, we're running, and we just start to, like, it's like a page of widescreen panels, and it's just running, and we're just slowly being lifted up as they just have hands on our shoulders, and they're just like, <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Uh, and so, just, like, dangling from that, mm -hmm. Toymaker just looks like all of the wind has been taken out of their sails. They were so convinced that this was going to go well. They had everything together. And they just look to Wasteland, and I accidentally changed, changed her pronouns. Um, and she just looks to Wasteland and glances over at Centurion and says, can, can we punch them? Is this someone we can punch? I, uh, I mean, I mean... Technically, I mean, anybody, somebody you can punch. Uh, Nerd. <laughs> uh, Centurion gives the two of us, like, just like a little shake in the air and goes, Wasteland, I should have expected you'd be here up to some kind of trouble. And I think they're shifting your labels. Uh, yeah, I think they are. I think they uh, are lowering your savior... And raising your danger. Okay. Pull up my basic moves real quick. If I can remember what's happening. What happens when, when moves are shifted. Is that uh, so piercing the you, mask you or is that something else? You can either accept it or you can roll to reject it. Um, that roll is basically a flat roll unless you have the one, uh, the, the one move from the one playbook that you are <laughs> that increases that. Uh, I am going to, I am going to, nonetheless, I am going to try and reject it. Cool. I think I'm absolutely, I refuse, I refuse to let you define who I am. Nice. And I got a nine. Okay. So, on a nine, that is a hit. So, you hold yourself and tune them out, mm -hmm. and you get to choose one. Clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong. Shift one label up and one down, your choice. Or cancel their influence and take plus one forward against them. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark potential and prove them wrong. Nice. I think I think I'm just like, you know what? What some hero some hero you are. Doctor Deep Freeze has been running has been running this operation under your nose for weeks, and you can't even pick up on that. What are you too busy with your too busy with your your autograph sessions and your photo ops? Yeah, figured. Typical, typical big city hero. Ama Real crime is happening, and you're not even around to stop it. Amazing. I love it. I think that sounds like you're provoking someone. I think so. What do you want them to do? Uh, I think I want them to... I think I want <sighs> them to ideally... Like, ideally... I think the bluntest answer is just let us go. Okay. Just let us go do our thing. Cool. I think I want, I think I want Centurion out of our hair. Great. Go ahead and roll plus superior. All right, I will do that. My superior is plus two. Nice. And and during this, definitely Toymaker is just kind of dangling there. She keeps on, like, trying to, to wiggle, to reach down for something. But her arms are pulled up by her suit. And so she can't mm -hmm. actually get to her belt, which has all the cool stuff on it. Uh, that's a 12. Oh, boy. <laughs> so on a 10 plus, they, raise to, they rise to the bait and do what you want. Mm -hmm. Um... So Centurion just, uh, there's just, like, a pause and a panel that's zoomed in on the completely unreadable mask. Mm -hmm. And then they just drop us. And did you want them to stick around and, like, be helpful or just to kind of, like, get the heck out of our way? I think just get the heck out of our way because I think that, that, 
I think they drop us, and I think uh, Wasteland stands up and, like, gets in their face, and we get a shot of Wasteland, yes. like, a foot or two shorter than Centurion. <laughs> just whispers, yeah, yeah, go fly, go fly away and stop a purse snatching while we save Christmas. <laughs> Chump. And then it flashes back to a close-up on their mask, and there's no expression, it's a blank mask, but you can feel a little confusion. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's, like, the reflection in the mask uh, that you can see the two kids, like, running away. And mm-hmm. I think Toymaker has grabbed onto Wasteland's hand um, mm-hmm. to kind of go, like, no, we have to run, we have to go now. Um, and the next panel shows them... I, I guess we're we're climbing this thing, right? Mm-hmm. Or is Doctor? I, I think he's gonna sh- probably show up to deal with yeah. things after we stop it, if we're able to stop it. Yeah, I think there's a brief sequence of like him on the ground talking to, uh, like in. I think he's wearing a lab, like a blue lab coat, with an orange vest on top of it, and a security or not a construction helmet. Yeah talking to two security guards like or two construction workers like like is everything going smoothly wonderful this will be a most profitable season for everyone nice merry christmas to me yeah i think he's like he's a taller white guy with Mm -hmm. like black hair that has like stripes of white going back at the temples like just very classically super villain Mm-hmm. And yeah, exactly. Like he's in costume. Does he? Does he have um? Does he have a beard or like a mustache or something? I think he's got a, a pencil thin mustache. Yes. A real um. Yes. A real Caesar Chavez. Definitely. <laughs> no, Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. Amazing. Perfect. Yeah, he's got a. He's got. A, he's got a specifically a Caesar Romero Joker mustache. Incredible. Um. So. We've gotten to, like, so there's a big crowd in front of the, and there's a big crowd gathered to, like, mm-hmm. watch this event, right? Like, it's it's not nearly as big as the ball dropping, but it's still, an, it's an exciting thing. Maybe maybe it's even something that the, um, that, like, the locals to Protean City know is the better event to go to, because mm-hmm. it's just as shiny, it's just as pretty, Yeah, and you don't lose your new years by being out there in the cold let me ask you a question as the gm of as the gm of the protean city comic <laughs> podcast which of our character which of which of which of the cast of characters is here versus at the other one? Oh boy that's an interesting question think on that yeah definitely <laughs> definitely in terms of like some of the adults crawdad would a hundred percent be there the uncrackable crawdad who's like mm-hmm. a big uh lobster looking guy <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, the dilettante is probably like in a nearby apartment watching through the window with a wine glass. Excellent. Um, in terms of our kid heroes, like the actual protagonists of the show, um, I feel like Puck would be there. Puck is a little bit like m- hidden emotional and mm-hmm. I, maybe I, here's what I want. Puck and frequency are there, uh, mm-hmm. and not just because I ship them. Um, but because they, like, you know, could be out there enjoying it. And I feel like, I feel like Kalino could be there. Oh, no, Kalino's had a very hard time lately. Kalino's not there. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I, I like Puck and Frequency being there. I like Puck being there as, like, it's not the big celebration, but yeah. it's a little thing. And that's, and that's, it's a little opportunity to have a little bit of that joy. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little tiny emotional moment. I think we get a brief shot of Puck there. As I think the two of us, like, get up to City Hall, we look around, we see the crowd of people, and I put my hands on on your shoulders, and I'm like, if you get up there, do you think you can disable this thing? And Toymaker just, like, is looking at everything and, like, clearly overwhelmed, because this is more light than ever exists in her reality. Uh, And she, like, reaches a hand up and puts it on... Wasteland's hand and mm-hmm. just goes, yeah, yeah, we've got, we've got the technology. I've got, I've got everything we need to be able to turn this off. I just need to, I just need to, to see through, see through the lights. And I think she's just like staring up at everything and trying to get like a lay of the land. If you can get up there, get your, get your head together, turn off these lights. I can make sure you've got a clean shot. 
Deal? Deal. All right. Fun. I'm going to do... This guy's going to do what he does best. And I think I, like, run over... We have a couple quick moves we might need to hit. Yes. You may have comforted, and comforted or supported me. I think I did. I think I did comfort and support you. And I may have assessed the situation. All right, let's do it. Why don't, why don't you comfort or support first? Okay. So that's a roll plus mundane. Plus mundane. All right, that's plus one. That's a nine. Nine, awesome. On a, on a, on a hit, uh, uh, you can mark potential, clear condition, or shift labels. Awesome. And I, I think they we kind of handled a little bit of that already. That like mm-hmm. she expressed like a little bit of her of her trouble she's having. She made yeah. physical like you know there was the physical contact between the two of you. So I think she did open up to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you if you agree, I would agree. Sure. Awesome. And I'm going to raise my superior mm-hmm. and lower my danger, which brings my superior to plus two and my danger to minus one. So let's try not mm-hmm. to fight anything. <laughs> I say, knowing we're about to go fight things. And then I'm going to assess the situation. All right, give me that assess roll. So that's plus superior, which is, that's seven on the dice, plus two, it's a nine. All right. Not bad, not bad. I Uh, believe you're asking one question? Yes, so I get to ask one, and we take plus one uh, while While acting acting on the the answers. answers. What here can I use... What here can I use to stop... The laser from working. Uh, I think what you can use to stop the laser from working is there are there are lights everywhere, right? Like there are strings okay. of Christmas lights everywhere. Yeah. But I think like you know technology well enough that you can see which ones are like what like the green Christmas tr- light strands mm-hmm. and which ones are sort of the there's a separate sort of strand of similar look intentionally similar looking wiring coiled in clear plastic that you can see running along that like you would have to shut down you would have to at least momentarily shut down power or risk being or like find a way to avoid being electrocuted but if you cut that if you sever that wire you can use that to shut down the laser beam wholesale okay awesome um now just gm to gm Mm -hmm. because we're doing this gm full uh that means i did not choose what here is the biggest threat Mm-hmm. So I definitely do not know that Dr. Yes. Doomsday, that Dr. Deep Freeze is here. Like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Normally you, that I, would happen in my head, but I wouldn't I also say it don't in both think our that heads. You know, I also don't think that you, because you're, you're having trouble seeing through lights, you're having yeah. trouble, like, interacting with this overflow of, like, technology. I'm not sure you know to shut off the power first. No, yeah, I don't think I do. Yeah. And I think that, because I think that might even be even a bigger threat right now than Dr. Deep Freeze is, yeah. like... That if you do this, it could go disastrously wrong, but I don't think you're considering that. No, yeah. Um, so do we want to do you or me first for this? Uh, why don't I go first? Because I want to know what happens as I'm misleading, distracting, or tricking people. Because I think I roll out uh, firecrackers from my pockets. Nice. And I roll them towards the crowd, just like sound makers. Nothing seriously dangerous. But I roll out a bunch of them and the fuses wind down. And, like, they start pop, 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 pop. And then I start, like, I start, like, squeeze it, or I put my my hands to my forehead in what I think looks like psychic power use. (laughs) I'm like, this looks so cool right now. And I start, like, really getting in people's heads to scare them about the noise. Nice. As I'm trying to distract, mislead, or trick somebody into, like, into into throwing them off. Is there a visual effect in the comic for when you use your psychic powers? I think there is. I think my eyes go kind of red. Nice. And I think a little, maybe like a little anarchist A forms in front of my face. Oh, so good. I love that. All right. Yeah. And so we get a panel that shows like some police officers and security turning and going like, hey, what the hell? Get down, kid. And like people starting to, to, uh, to react to the things. But then we're, let's Mm -hmm. get that. Let's definitely get that mislead. Yeah. That's one of your moves, right? Yes, it is. Are you watching closely? Yes. That's a... Oh, that's a five. That's not good. Oh, boy. That is not good. Hmm. I'm hopelessly embroiled in it, and under pressure, I'm going to have to mark a condition. Okay. Um, and I still make a move, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so because... I'm going to mark afraid. I'm, I think that, oh, no. I think that like... 
I think I'm I'm nervous. I think I think that like too much attention is on me, and I'm feeling like I'm, I'm feeling like uh, the the heat is on. Yeah, and I think we just we established just now that it, like there's police there, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think that they get scared and they react not by running but by like falling onto their training, mm-hmm. and they just charge forward, and you just get tackled by like two big dudes Mm -hmm. uh and like they're like wrestling you to the ground and we get a panel that shows dr deep freeze who of course has some of the police on the take Mm -hmm. and he's just like slowly starting to come over while muttering out what seems to be the problem over here all right so what's as this is hap- as this is happening, I've I've, at le- I've I've got the attention of Doctor Deep Freeze. What is what is uh, what is Toymaker doing? Uh, Toymaker ha- uh, takes out a uh, candy cane looking device. It's like it's it's clearly metallic, but it has like little LEDs of of red and white stripes around it. Mm-hmm. And yep. she hooks it onto one of the uh, one of the electric lights, like just like one of the mm-hmm. strings. Yep. And hits a couple of buttons, and it basically, like, reverse zip lines up it. Um, and so it's, like, shattering all the little bulbs as it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she, like, just up that line. And as she's going up, she's takes out, like, a tinsel whip. Um, and, like, all of this is, like, mostly black with, like, little bits of, of Christmassy colors on it. And she's going to try to use her tinsel whip to just, like, start slicing through the electrical wires that she needs to. I'm going to call that. I think that's I think you're directly engaging a threat. OK, um, let me look at directly engage the threat. Make sure you I think it could mm. either be that or unleashing my powers. I think it's unleash your powers. I think that's a better fit for it because it's not you're not attacking someone. Um, I think it's a better fit for it. <laughs> and that helps me a little bit because that's two points higher at a plus one. Mm. Okay, no, wait, that's good. Plus one. I got a seven. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Plus seven and nine. Mark a condition, or I'll tell you how the effect is temporary. I think I'm going to ask you to mark a condition. Oh, I get to choose if I want to mark a condition. Oh, oh got it. Or yeah, right. you can, okay. uh, or I'll ask, or you get to choose unstable or temporary. Oh, got it. Okay, which one do you want to do? Um, Not to be the worst, but I kind of want to make it unstable or temporary. Okay, <laughs> like, I, think, I, I think I'm all right with that. Because I think I know how that looks, and I think I know the move I want to make. Nice. I think I want to put some people in... I think I want to put people in danger. Oh, no! <laughs> as that's happening. I think I'm going to... Yeah, I'm putting innocence in danger by... I think I think you're slashing it, and I think it's working, but there's, like, now wires swinging, and they are live wires, so there's, there's sparks zapping left, right, and center, and people are, like, running for cover. And I think as... Deep Freeze is now looming over me. I just start screaming like, Toymaker! Power! Shut off the power! See through the lights, Toymaker! Oh no. Uh, we get a panel that's just a close-up of Toymaker's eyes, and her going like, Oh shit. Uh, and then she, like, starts swinging along one of the lines. She's completely out of control at this point. Like, it's... Everything is just moving so quickly, and Dr. Deep Freeze draws closer to Teenage teenage Wasteland, and, like, the cops have got you, like, lifted up at this point, Mm -hmm. and Dr. Deep Freeze just brings his uh, long, pointed nose directly in front of your face, and, like, we get a panel of the two of you close up, and he goes... What do we have here? A naughty boy, certainly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm teen it. I am. T- mm, mm. And I, I think what I'm going to do. I think I'm just like stuttering and kicking and and like and trying to to sound heroic, not quite getting the words out. And I think I just, I finally just, like, lock him in the eye. I look him dead in the eyes, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm, I, 
don't have time for this. And I, like, look him in the eyes, and red eyes, uh, anarchy symbol in the face. And I'm just like, yo, run away, or something. All right. Um, hmm. I'm trying to decide what makes the most sense for this. Do you think it's engage? Am I engaging the threat? Or am Psychic I... Psychic powers are always a little weird, but I think that this is engaging the threat. You're in a position that yeah. that if this fails, you could be hurt, mm-hmm. and you're in a position that you could cause him to mark a condition. So I think engaging yeah. a threat is what makes sense. So okay. roll plus cool. danger. All right, that's plus you're, one. You're trying to, like, scare him off. Yeah, and that is a seven, so we're going to exchange exchange blows. All right. On a seven to nine, I'm going to pick one. I'm going to... I'm going to avoid their blows. Okay. I think I just lash out, right? Like, I think I'm not thinking clearly enough, and I'm too scared to focus on, like, one particular objective. So I'm just kind of, like, in everyone's head. And I think I'm in... By that, I mean I'm in, like, everyone's head in, like, a 30-foot radius. Okay. Great. Um, People are just getting scared and angry around (sighs) me. As just chaos is unfolding. And there's there's just like this chaos all around. Um, Dr. Deep Freeze has some experience of like dealing with superheroes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so like he's affected, right? Like definitely affected, no question. Um, and we see a look of fear on his face for a moment. And then it's just taken over by just, like, this rage. We see, like, red forming up near the top of his head. uh, Mm -hmm. And he he grabs onto your face for a second. And just, like, because, like, you know, they're they're holding you back. um, And he just goes, wretched little boy. You're fighting in a weight class far above yours. And he just sort of, like, pushes you back and demands to the police, like, get him out of here. Kill him if you have to. And he turns his back and starts just stalking away. And he's also trying to shift your labels. Mm -hmm. He's trying to raise your mundane and lower your savior. You can't save him. You're just a boy. Um, no, I think I'm going to resist that. Okay. I think I'm for sure going to resist that. That's a nine. All right. So, uh, you can, uh, clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong. Shift one up, one down your choice or cancel their influence and take plus one forward against them. Uh, I'm going to clear this condition. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. Nice. How are you going to act to immediately prove them wrong? Uh, I think that, like, they push me back. I think I'm gonna, I'm, we're, I think we're going, I think if, if, if this is what's happening, we're going to 11. Nice. And I think the two cops just pull out guns, right? Yeah. They're just like, all right, fine. And I just, like, double arm spear both of them as I, like, just barrel through them. Like, no, no, you don't walk away from me. I walk away from you and look cool. And then I just tackle both of the cops. Amazing. They crash hard into the snow. And we all just, like, tumble over together in a big mess. Yeah, and, like, I think knocking through these police, like, that's not that's not a big deal. You're a superhero. Mm-hmm. You can do that. Um, so we just get those panels of you just, like, dragging them into the snow. Um, and do, do you think... Do you think Toymaker can see a way to shut off the power from where she is? Or do, we, do you think I need to assess to find it? I think that you can probably... I think you can... S- I think, I think, give me an assess. Okay, sounds good. Because, like, she's up above everything, so she's got a pretty good vantage point. And she knows tech, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a nine again. Okay. Uh, so what here can I use to cut off the power? Uh, I think that, like, I think there is, for the purposes of the, uh, of the electrical thing, yeah. I think there's a big, there's a big computer console with a switch. Nice. That is decorate like, decorated with ice and snow and looks like it's part of, like, a holiday, uh, a holiday, uh, display. Yeah. 
but that you could definitely just like shut off. Like it's basically a fuse box for the whole holiday display. We'll Perfect. Say. And so she just like she swings around on one of the the cut uh, light strands and just lands down in front of it. Um, there's there's probably like a tech there running stuff. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of like pushes them aside and goes, listen, I'm really sorry, but there just isn't time. And she's going to try to like stuff one of her peppermint bombs underneath the desk to just like blow up the whole console. I, I think just before you do that. Oh, no. Uh, I think from around the corner, you just hear. You don't really think that's going to work, do you? It's why it's too late. The ball is already just under where it needs to be to activate my laser. You don't truly believe that you, you're not, you're not bright enough to stop this thing. You're just a child. You're no scientist. And I think I'm going to try and shift your labels. What, what are your labels are you changing? Uh, I think I'm label, I think I'm pushing uh, superior down. And I'm going to say freak up. Okay. I think it's, I think it's, it's very much like you are just some, some strange child out of time. Oh, <laughs> you are not, you are nothing. Oh, I think that hurts, but she thinks that he's right. She's going to take okay. it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to reject, but I don't think, I don't think she's there yet. I think she mm -hmm. thinks that that's true. She wasn't sent back because she was, like, the best or the brightest. She was sent back because she was the one who had to go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, uh, I think we get a panel at that point that shows that Dr. Deep Freeze is completely right. And so mm -hmm. we have, like, the sleigh coming across the sky with, with the reindeer uh, and, like, the little glowing red point of light in front of it all. And the toy maker just turns uh, to Dr. Deep Freeze and uh, she has the peppermint bomb in front of her. And she's just like, S stand back. I, I can, I'm going to stop you. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to use my connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. Where I push myself to remember the version of someone that exists in your future. Mm -hmm. And I mark a condition and roll plus memories. Okay. So I think I'm going to mark Afraid, mm -hmm. continuing this trend of I am not going to be much use in a drag out fight. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> and I roll plus my memories and my memory score starts at a minus one. Okay. I got a seven. Okay. So on a hit, you connect who they are now to who they are in the future. Choose the role that they fulfill in the future and the GM will tell you about their future self. And I have the choices of monster, traitor, corrupter, martyr, builder, or leader. And it would be mm. easy for me to choose monster or traitor. I think I'm going to choose martyr. Okay. That, like, that Dr. Doomsday started this thing. But in the future, we know he makes a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And, like, he might not in this timeline, but I I called him Dr. Doomsday. Dr. Deep Freeze, in my timeline, mm -hmm. we know that he did this and that he started this, mm -hmm. but he eventually makes a sacrifice. I think I know what the sacrifice is, if that's all right. Absolutely. I think what happens is, because we've ne we have not fully laid out what, like the the apocalypse scenario is and i think this is where we see it in a series of like flash forward panels yeah we get a panel of a laser beam hitting santa's sleigh mm -hmm. we get a panel of the sleigh crashing yeah we get a panel of we get a panel of santa unconscious and dr deep freeze like holding presents like he's robbing the sleigh <laughs> and then we get a panel afterwards of demons mm -hmm. the yule cat Hold on, give me a second. I came prepared for this. <laughs> the Yule Cat, Bell Snickle, the Tom Ten, Gurla, 
The Yule Lads. All of them. The Krampus in the var in the very far back. All of the Christmas demons that Saint that that Santa Claus has rounded up and protects us from. No. <laughs> Just marching forth and rampaging over over the world itself. Yeah. And I think the last panel you see is him like is people running as he uh as 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 he battles out with Bell Snickle. Oh, jeez. an old man in rags and sticks who beats children, who beats, beats children who have misbehaved. And it's just the two of them duking it out, and finally he just goes down. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I had a list of Christmas monsters pulled up I for love just that, that sequence. Um. And I think I think then is when the laser shoots, right? Like I don't mm. know that we have another moment. No, I think that's when I think that's the golden opportunity. I think the laser absolutely shoots. Yeah. And so we get a panel that just shows things lining up, and then just deep blue power uh, raging up through everything, and just firing off into the sky and hitting the back of Santa's sleigh. And the sleigh begins to fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reindeer are like careening and trying to recover their stance. And we have like a shot from the ground. We have a panel shoot a big one page panel from the ground that shows Dr. Deep Freeze standing over Toymaker, who's kind of like fallen down halfway over the over the console and down a little bit further now standing over the two officers in the snow, Teenage Wasteland. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Uh, I think Wasteland looks up and sees this unfolding. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, sees this and sees the doubt in your eyes, right? Like, we get a close-up of Toymaker, we get a yeah. close-up of Wasteland, reaches into his back pocket and just starts running. Like, t- running towards the situation. I think we get another front-end shot of the two of you talking, of uh, of Deep Freeze monologuing about, like, you don't belong here. You don't, you, you are no, you are no hero. You, you are not going to stop this. Don't you see? The sleigh is already falling. I am already going to be the richest man in Protean City. I, do you smell smoke? <laughs> I, do you feel, what? And he reaches back, ah! I'm on, fi- I'm on fire! I'm on fire! <laughs> and I've slipped fireworks into his, into his, the back pocket. I've slipped, like, a smoke bomb into his back pocket to distract him long enough so that you have time to shut off the power. Perfect, yeah. Uh, and so she just immediately, like, turns around and just slams the, the detonation device underneath the console and mm-hmm. jumps to tackle uh, Dr. Deep Freeze. Uh, not to fight him, but just to protect him from the blast of of uh, red and green fire that's about to shoot out. Good, very, very good. And I think, I think I'm not even gonna. I don't even think we need to necessarily roll. I think this is just sort of the big climactic. Everything goes up in smoke. And why don't, well, why don't you roll to unleash your powers, and I'm gonna roll to mislead to distract or mislead. Okay, sure. So that we know exactly what happens here. Yeah. Do you want to mislead or should I unleash first? Um, why don't I mislead first? Okay. To see if to see if we can not cuz if you roll if you roll well in the mislead that essentially gives me the opportunity. Yeah. And then I don't need to unleash necessarily. Yeah, I got an 8. I got an 8, so I okay. get an opp- I'm going to give you an opportunity so you so you don't need to unleash to like blow the thing up. Okay. And I'm going to I get to pick one more. I'm going to expose a weakness or flaw. That is that he is not a fighter. Okay. That like that we that he's not interested in he is not interested in like duking it out with us and having like a big superhero showdown. Yeah. And like a lot of, you know, in line with everything that he's done, I think he specifically is trying to do this in a way that like avoids having to fight anyone. Yeah. Because I think the weakness or flaw that I want to expose. Great. Um, so I think maybe, maybe we even get, uh, we get a panel of, of Toymaker tackling him Mm -hmm. and then like him flinching and like having the hands up and Mm -hmm. like, no, don't hit me. 
And then just we have our two heroes, like, looking up at the sky again. And the sleigh is careening. It's it's going to go down. Mm-hmm. Uh, how are... And I think at that point, Toymaker just looks to Wasteland and goes... I don't, I don't know how we can, how, how can we can get there on time? Everyone's, everyone's watching this. Everyone's seeing this. I, I don't know. Okay. I, okay. Stand back. We're about, this is going to be my greatest masterpiece. And I crack my knuckles and I crack my neck. And I put my hands to my forehead, my eyes go red, but instead of the anarchist A, it is Christmas tree. Nice. And I try to just flat, like, the I'm trying to specifically put in everyone's mind, like, a sense of hope and, and love for Santa Claus. Perfect. The feeling of Christmas magic. So I think I'm going to try and unleash my powers to 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 give everyone the, the power to to lift up Santa's sleigh and repair it with magic. What is what is your uh, freak right now? Uh, plus one. Okay, never mind. Um, I have an ability that would have let you use my superior, but it would it doesn't make any difference. That is an uh, that is a nine. That is a nine. Okay. Uh. Are you going to mark a condition, or should I tell you how it's unstable or temporary? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask how it's unstable or temporary because I feel like there's we can still I feel like there's still an opportunity for us to get on board that sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's absolutely right. Um, we get a panel that shows people like looking on with horror, and then someone like calls out from the crowd like, "Hey, sick tricks!" And, like, you, you've brought them hope, right? Mm-hmm. If this sleigh hits the ground, that hope is shattered. Okay. Like, right now, they are seeing Santa fly in a way that is way wilder than they ever expected. Mm-hmm. But it's still flying. Uh, if it hits the ground, that's done. So I think we gotta get up there. Mm-hmm. I think I've got a way to get us up there. All right. Um, at that point, Toymaker... Uh, just, like, looks to you and goes, yes, it's working, it's working, you've got them. Uh, and she, like, looks up and goes, but we still need to save the big man. And... And I look back and I, like, no, you need to save the big man, because this is what you were sent here to do. This has been your mission since day one. Go be the hero that you are meant to be, that you are. I think I'm tempted to have you roll to comfort or support. I think I, I think but, I can roll to comfort or support. But I, I've got a line to maybe throw in before then. Okay. That would allow us to hit weakness, the team move also, which is a great sure. way to show off the a little bit of more of masks. Yep. Oh wait, no, that's not that actually doesn't work for me. Oh, never mind. I have different team moves than like every other playbook. I don't have the All weakness right. uh, team move. I'm rolling mundane. All right. That's a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. Um. Okay. Uh. So th on a hit, they hear you. They mark potential clear condition or shift labels if they open up to you. Um, so first off, you can add a team to the pool or clear a condition mm -hmm. yourself. Uh, so I that's nice. I don't have any conditions to clear, so I'll throw a team in the pool. Cool. So our pool is now at two, I believe. Yeah, I believe two. Uh. And... Uh, Toymaker just makes eye contact and she's breathing like really heavily. Like she's, it, it almost looks like she's like in coming into a panic attack and she mm -hmm. takes both of Wasteland's hands and just goes, are we going to do this? Are we, are we going to save Christmas? <sighs> Don't tell anybody that I said this. But yeah, we're totally going to save Christmas. It definitely looks like she's about to kiss him. Mm -hmm. And then her face just turns bright red. 
Mm -hmm. And she turns and, like, takes a couple of big steps and jumps off and, like, smacks a button on her, on, like, some of the armor on her chest. Mm -hmm. And, like, two uh, wings just, like, flick out of the side of her, uh, of her suit. And she, like, starts to try to rock it up to try to get up to the sleigh. Mm -hmm. Now, I, so I have a question. It's a logistical question. Yes. We said we have until seven. Uh, we can seven ish. We can keep, we can, we can, we can wrap this up. Okay. Cause I don't want to like make things more complicated if we don't have think, time to make things more complicated. I think this is, I think this is the big finale. I okay. think, end on, I think end with this one. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and yeah, so she is hurling up towards the sleigh. Mm hmm. I think that's unleashing your powers. Okay. Because I'm trying to get there in time. Yeah. Yeah, that that checks out. Oh, yeah. Boxcars. Boxcars. That brings me to a 14. Oh, beautiful. I think that you, yeah, I think that you, we were, were up there, bef- like, it is just soaring through the clouds, right? Yeah. It is beautiful. Like, we are hand in hand soaring through the clouds. Uh, we, 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 we fly just, I think we, I, I'm going to say we fly through the hole that the laser beam has shot in Santa's sleigh and yes. then just drop into it. Uh, and so, uh, Toymaker definitely drops you off next to Santa and gives Santa like an affectionate clasp on the shoulder and like a huge grin and says, I told you I'd be back for you. <laughs> oh, I never doubted you. And she's just going to kind of, like, flip over the side to hang underneath the sleigh to try to, like, repair the systems that are going on Mm -hmm. wrong, like, the problem. Like, there's magic leaking out and stuff like that. But you're up there with Santa. Yeah, I think there's there's two brief moments that I want to play out as right before we fly off into our proverbial Christmas sunset. Nice. Uh, The first one is I think I land and immediately like, hey, Santa, it's nice to see you. You're this... It's going to be all you're going to have to really go above and beyond tonight if you don't want coal. I know I, I've, I'm I've seen all of it. Yeah. No, I think fi- I figured that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other moment is I think like we're still going down, right? Like you're yeah. fixing it. We're close. And Santa's like, I don't I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it to every pla- every house on Earth. And. Hand on his sh- hand on his other shoulder, Christmas tree in front of my face. You got this. You're Santa Claus. Yes. Comfort or support someone. All right. Oh my God! Rolling mundane again. That is an eight. That's an eight. On a hit, they hear you. They mark potential clear conditioner shift labels if they open up to you. Um, I think Santa at this point is afraid. Essentially, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. Oh no, no, he's not afraid. He's hopeless. He's hopeless. He's, he's hopeless. hopeless. He doesn't think he's going to do it. Yeah, that was that was the hit he took before. Yep. And he just, like, lowers his head for a moment. And then locks eyes with Tyler. Mm-hmm. And says, I'm proud of you. You took a moment that you had no faith in me. Or in what was happening. And you rose up anyway. You saw what needed to be done. And you did it. And I think you've helped make a lot of children's Christmas just a little bit better. And he's going to give you like a big old bear hug. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 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 all right. I, I mean, yeah, I guess you're Santa. It's fine. And, like, still, like, the panel shows, like, it is still careening downward. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've got Toy Maker underneath, uh, just, like, rewiring systems and, like, she's got, uh, what, what has she got that makes sense? She's got, like, a big bow mm-hmm. that's, like, a big, like, techno bolt bow that she ties around something and pulls tight into the big pretty Christmas bow. Yep. And, like... The sleigh just gives like a kuchunk and starts moving back up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't know if it does yet. Tyler, I... do you believe in Christmas? 
I think I believe in Christmas. Amazing. I think this is, I think it's, I think like, I think it's going down and finally just, he was like, Santa, you got to drive your sleigh. You got to drive, <laughs> drive the sleigh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. I, I completely forgot. And he, he takes the reins and just gives them like a good, like, wah. And the reindeer just like pull themselves back in and right themselves and the sleigh starts to just, like, drag back up into the sky. Mm-hmm. And we, we fly off into the night, and then I want to ask you one last question. Yeah. What is your Christmas epilogue? Hmm. Because I know what mine is. If you want me to go first, I can go first. I'm trying to decide if she goes back to her time yet. Hmm. Interesting. Know if she, I don't know if she can yet. Interesting. I don't know if she can at all. I mean, her timeline has been erased. Oh, that's true. That's true. Why don't you do yours? I'll, I'll think on mine for a minute. I think mine is just Principal McLean in her office. She comes in and it, there is like a mountain of stuff in and around her office. Little chachis, but not like things that like a, a, a 37 year old principal would like. It's like <laughs> a pogo stick. Yeah. And a slinky. And a DS. And she just looks around, and we get a panel of the DS, and it just says, like, Maurice Clemens, October 8th, somebody stole my DS. (laughs) Pogo Jones, June 4th, my pogo stick has gone missing. And she just looks around, and just goes, well, guess case closed. (laughs) And I think we get one more scene with Nieves also, um, because like she's out of her of her like big futuristic armor. I think she went around with Santa, and we have like Santa in plain clothes, mm-hmm. um, and he just like you know looks you know Santa ish, but in like a in like a leather ja- like a brown leather jacket and some jeans, and they're sitting having like some hot cocoa. And she she's in a um in like a like a big ugly Christmas sweater mm-hmm. thing, um, and she's just like looking down at her hot chocolate, and goes, so uh, so it, the magic wasn't enough to send me back, I guess. Well, no, but it was enough to. Undo the demonscape that was the future. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, I guess I'll be born in a couple of years, and I'll get some uh, nice Christmases coming up. Well, listen. Oh, I gotta think of something. I had an idea. All right. Santa could probably use a toy maker. Mm hmm. Uh, yep, no, that's exactly what it is. I think he sits down and he just says, Well, let me ask you something, toy maker. Yeah. What in Sleigh Bell's name is a Nintendo Switch? The kids are talking about Joy-Cons. The kids are talking about smashing. And I don't understand a word of it. Do you understand what a Smash Ultimate is? Yeah, it's like this really retro system. Uh, It was back before VR totally took over everything. Oh, thank goodness. Please, can you... I, I could use someone. Santa's version of toys is a little outdated. Uh... And she, like, looks down at her hot chocolate again and looks up with just, like, this huge, like, beatific grin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, she's looked, like, tired and haunted throughout all of this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but she just looks like a like a kid on Christmas. Yep. And she says, I mean, I always did fancy myself a toy maker. And that's game. And that's game. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> 
perfect. I loved it. What a good game that was. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for playing with me and inviting oh, me on. This was so much treasured, fun. Treasured tradition. Treasured holiday tradition. Oh, Brandon, I Brandon, thank it. you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was delightful, as always. Wonderful. Real quick, before we wrap up, where can people find you and your work online? Uh, they can find me primarily on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Captain Cobalt. Or if you're interested in following one of my shows at Stop, Hack, and Roll for a lot of talking about making games. Or at Protean City for my Masks Actual Play podcast that this is a episode of? Question mark? Uh, it can be. I mean, you can have the audio if you want it. <laughs> oh, you know what? That might be a good thing. I think we aren't doing an episode on Christmas. So <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll ask James. Uh, no. But... If you want more teenage uh, superhero action, if you enjoyed this, uh, give Protean City Comics a listen. We it's have a lot of fun good. with it. I can't recommend it enough. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, I also am on Twitch at Dr. Captain Cobalt, and I believe I'm also on YouTube at Dr. Captain Cobalt, but um, there's not a lot there yet. There's going mm. to be, probably. There, I've got a couple of Christmas gifts I'm hoping that I get that will help me like really launch into becoming an enormous YouTube celebrity. <laughs> I, uh, Christmas dreams are important. Christmas dreams are important, yeah. <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was a delight. And now I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it, future me. Thanks, past me. And thanks again to Brandon for coming on the show. And Brandon, th happy holidays. That, that means a lot. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Obviously, follow all of Brandon's work. He is a brilliant creator with a, an incredible mind for games and how people play them. Follow Protean City at ProteanCity.com. Check out Stop, Hack, and Roll at StopHackAndRoll.com. Go to Magpie Games and pick up the Ash Can edition of Pasión de las Pasiones. And follow Brandon on Twitter at Dr. Captain Cobalt. Then, of course, follow us on Twitter at Party of One Pod. Then like the show at Facebook at Facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. Join our Discord community at Bit.ly slash Party of One Discord. And if you're interested in coming onto the show as a guest, because we're always looking for cool new people to play cool new games with, shoot me an email at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review. They really help us find new audiences, which helps us grow and do bigger, better things. You can also give us a social media shout out or a word of mouth recommendation to a friend. All of those things are really, really helpful. And I will personally consider it a special little Christmas gift that I will treasure for a lifetime. If you enjoy the work that I do, whether as a podcaster, game designer, or just entertaining Twitter trash, support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jeffstormer. If you listened to this episode and thought, God, I wish I just had some more holiday entertainment to pass the time on this cold Christmas morning, well, then you should check out Talking Nog at bit.ly slash talkingnogcast. I'm using that address because I'm inevitably going to move from SoundCloud to another service, and that way you're connected no matter when you listen to this episode. Talking Nog is a podcast about eggnog. I don't really know what's more Christmassy than that. Check that out. You're going to love it. Talking Nog 2018 just dropped. I just finished it before recording these words. And let me tell you, it is simultaneously a train wreck and maybe my masterpiece. And if you're looking for more tabletop podcast goodness, check out All My Fantasy Children, a character creation, storytelling, and world building podcast powered by listener prompts, in which every week my best friend Aaron Katana Saez and I take a listener submitted prompt and spin it into a fantasy character, populating a shared universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday at allmyfantasychildren.com. Party of One is produced and edited, as always, by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for this episode comes from the song Christmas Rap by Kevin McLeod. And that's it for me. Until next year. I hope whether you partake in the holiday or not that your day finds you warm, content, comfortable, and loved. I hope you take some time to think about those with less today and not just today. I hope you find some time to take care of yourself because you deserve it and I care about you. And as always, happy holidays and party on.